Well, thanks for uh, watching this video. I was at the uh, conference in San Francisco looking for a new EMR system. It was the end of the day. I'd been to a bunch of different booths and I was just going nuts. They are they're trying to tell you about how good it is and then I end up going to the restroom afterwards. My head's spinning from this technology issue. I go to wash my hands and the sensor's not working. Try to try to be a, a good, well-groomed guy. This is before coronavirus. Finally got the uh, other one to work. And then, of course, as you go to the other to paper towel dispenser to dry them, and of course, it's the same thing. Anyway, I was feeling this over-teched beatdown and just wanted to get back to my paper charts. Sometimes I do these volunteer things and we're in the mobile eye clinic and it's the efficiency of seeing patients with a paper chart is just so much better. The only thing that got me to sleep the night before we first started with EMR seven years ago was the saying, nothing's ever as bad as you fear. Well, had I known that EMR would not only meet but exceed my fears, I probably would not have slept that night. I'm a pretty tech savvy guy and I took my first computer class in 1979. The uh, problem is computers, while it's a great way to crunch numbers and a great way to store data, it's a rather inefficient way in an ophthalmology practice to enter data. With all the talk about caring for more people, we've actually cut back our clinic about 10 to 15 percent in order to accommodate computerized medical records. Now, If there's a fire like we had in Los Angeles a year and a half ago, certainly the data stored off-site would be safer. But on most days, that's just not what we encounter. Instead, it's just the slog of entering data into a computerized medical record. The Technopoly crisis hit California with the electronic ballots that were used in the March primaries. We got to enjoy two-hour waits just to cast our votes. Anyway, I'm sentimental to the much more efficient days in ophthalmology of the paper charts. We have a lot of neat uh, technological advances in ophthalmology. The wavefront aberrometry is kind of an interesting one. Uh, a lot of doctors would feel that this would be lumped into the category of just being overkill. Uh, I do have a presentation at this meeting where we studied the efficacy and improvements in predictability with different lens calculation formulas and much to my chagrin actually the wavefront aberrometry was quite helpful and I say to my chagrin because it is it takes a long time so it probably adds another 50 percent surgical time to uh, to uh, a regular cataract surgery but it, statistically it did show to help so at this point we're continuing to use it. I love a technological advance when it's easy to use, inexpensive, and great for the patients. And that's what some of these smartphone apps do for our patients when we're implanting a toric lens or doing an LRI, for example. The one that I use is just an app for my iPhone. It's called Toric Cam. It's really easy to use and super accurate in aligning a toric IOL or orienting an LRI. So we really have some amazing new technologies in ophthalmology from the new intraocular lens technologies, multifocal lenses, pupil expanding devices. Certainly the Exomer laser was an amazing advancement. Some of the new MIGS procedures are showing promise. Uh, endothelial keratoplasty is something that's really benefited our patients as well. However, when we talk about technopoly, we're talking about bowing down to new technology as if it's some type of deity. And that which takes the cake in that regard, I think has to be the femtosecond laser for cataract surgery. It's super cool technology that now, in its 10th year of commercial availability, is still looking for an indication. While the femtosecond laser for cataract surgery is available, yet no longer so new, those patients who do inquire about it are typically quite reassured that they can have their cataract removed without the need for any laser at all, just with gentle ultrasound.
longer surgical times, the need for additional anesthetic drops, and increased contact with the patient's cornea do not help us achieve better refractive outcomes for our patients. Akuda, tight coverage. Ooh, I don't know. Boy, he's holding on to that football. Uh, he has possession of that ball. That's a catch. When you're evaluating new technology, just think about what your goals are for your patients. Consider the unintended consequences, and if you decide to employ new technology, evaluate your outcomes. We've all had computer problems, but I just, I drew the line. You know, you get that blue screen of death, and uh, this computer, I don't know what possessed me. I mean, it was just, you know, I wasn't out of my mind or anything. I just had it. That was Lucas Hinch, a guy who works at a tea store. 